your Bibles to John chapter 15. I believe John chapter 15. We started a new series last week that we called Signs of Maturity, Signs of Maturity. And in this series, we've been talking about growing up, what it means to mature, develop, and to grow. It's time that we are serious about what we believe. And in John chapter 15, we're going to look at verse 1. Jesus is talking to us. John records it. Jesus is talking to us. And he says in verse 1, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Now, the Bible can be considered a, and sometimes an agricultural book. It's interesting how often the Bible uses its forming examples. Seed and harvest and fruit. It's very interesting how that takes place. And so we see here that he says, I am the vine, talking about farming. And uh, my father is the vine dresser or the gardener. I'm the vine. My father is the gardener. Verse two, every branch or every limb that's connected to the vine, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. That simply means that word takes away simply means he lifts up. If you've ever seen some type of tree or some type of vine and the and the branch is kind of hanging down on the ground, if you lift it up, it has the ability to produce fruit. Lift it up off the ground. So every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he doesn't cut it off. He actually lifts it up so that it can bear fruit. And every branch that bears fruit, watch this, he prunes that it may bear fruit more fruit. That word prunes means he cleans or he trims it that it may bear more fruit. Now understanding during the cleaning and the trimming process, it's not always comfortable. Have you ever seen a bush that's been trimmed back? It doesn't look as beautiful as it once did. It's been cut back and clean for the purpose of bearing more fruit. Verse three, Jesus says there, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Next verse, he says, abide. Somebody say abide. abide. Come on, say abide. abide. Abide in me. Watch this. And I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Now, this word abide means to remain or to stay or to be consistent or to be constant or to continue, or to never depart or leave. Abide in me, and I in you. Watch this. The branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Uh, the connection between the branch and the vine is so critical that it's, it's even, uh, I'll say it this way, it's more important than sheep having a shepherd. It's more important, listen, than a child having a father. The branch cannot bear fruit without the vine. It is impossible. If it's disconnected from its life source, it cannot. Some of you grew up without a father and you've, you've been okay. Praise God. Some sheep have grown up without shepherds. They've been okay. But watch this. This connection that Jesus is talking about here, it cannot happen if you're not abiding in me. If you're not connected to the life source, you cannot bear fruit whatsoever. And look at the next verse in verse five. He says, I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides, somebody say abides, in me and I in him bears much fruit. So the goal, the vision, the purpose of the branch is to bear fruit. God is interested in fruit being bared. God is interested in manifestation. God is interested in you bearing more fruit. And he says, for without me, you can do nothing. There's no thing you can do without me. If you are not connected to the vine, you are not going to be productive. If you are not connected to the vine, you are not going to be fruitful. If you are not connected to the vine, you are not going to see manifestation. If you are not connected to the vine, you can produce nothing. Look at the next verse. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. I almost brought in a withered branch today. And you know, you've seen it before. It's just dried up. 
It's withered. It has, it's brown. It's about to break. It's dead. There's no vine giving it a life source. There's no vine giving it uh, the potential to produce. It's disconnected from its source of supply. And these branches are gathered together and they throw into the fire. I like, I like a fireplace. I throw them into the fireplace, praise God. And they are burned. But look at this next verse. Verse 7, he says, but if you abide in me, somebody say abide. This is so very important. This, the, when we abide, the onus is on you. You have a decision to disconnect. When you abide, what does that mean? Continue in me. And here's the key. And my words abide in you. So my words have to be in you. You have to continue in me. Put my words on the inside of you. You have to abide in me and my words will abide in you. Now watch this. And then you shall ask what you desire, not what you need. Ooh, praise God. You can ask what you desire. God said, I'll meet your daily needs if you seek first the kingdom. You can ask what you desire. And it shall be done for you. Praise God. Abiding gives us answered prayer. Wonder why my prayers aren't getting answered. Are you abiding in me? And, and are my words abiding in you? Why am I hearing from God? Are you abiding in me? And are my words abiding in you? You shall ask what you desire. Praise God, because what you desire will be from him because his words are in you and you are in him. So you don't have to wonder if you're asking amiss. You're asking exactly what he wants you to ask because you are abiding in him and his words are abiding in you. Praise God. Then when you ask what you desire, you're actually asking what he desires. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And it shall be done for you look at the next verse there in verse eight. I like it. He says, by this, my father is glorified. My father is honored that you bear much fruit. He's interested in you bearing much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Now go to Galatians chapter five. Galatians chapter five. We'll look at verse twenty two. Galatians 5, 22, he says, but the fruit of the spirit, the fruit. So we just talked about how to produce fruit. Pr fruit is produced by abiding in him, by remaining and not departing and continuing in him, taking his words, literally taking his words as if they are life to those that find them and health to all your flesh. You take these words as if you need your next breath. He says, when you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you will and it shall be given unto you. But watch this. But the fruit of the spirit, what type of fruit are we talking about? Are we talking about more money? Are we talking about, you know, more external things? I believe we're talking about this fruit being produced. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such. There is no law. It is limitless. You are boundless if you have the fruit of the Spirit working in you. You cannot be contained if you have the fruit of the Spirit. There's no law against it. It's limitless. So when this fruit is manifested in, on the inside of you, and then it's seen on the outside of you, there is no, listen to me, you cannot be stopped. There's no law against it. You are boundless, praise God. This fruit that is produced on the inside of you through your connection with the vine will manifest and you will begin to show signs of production. Hallelujah. Now, this fruit of the spirit is a cluster of fruit. It's not somebody else has joy and somebody else has long suffering and somebody else has self-control. And you say, I keep sinning because I don't have the fruit of self-control. No, 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 that's not it whatsoever. This fruit is a cluster of fruit. You actually right now potentially on the inside of you possess all of this fruit of the spirit on the inside of you. It's in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. Your reborn, new, created spirit, when you gave Jesus the Lord of your life, is in you, and your spirit connected with the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you, and manifestation will come out from you when you abide in Jesus. You'll produce 
this fruit. I like what the Amplified Bible says. It says the work of the Holy Spirit accomplishes within you will produce this fruit. The work that the Holy Spirit accomplishes within you will produce this fruit. Now, last week we talked about this fruit of love, agape love, unconditional love. But today I want to talk about the fruit of joy. Somebody say joy. The fruit of joy I want to talk about today because I tell you what, when we when we get into this fruit of joy, this fruit of joy, the purpose of having this fruit of joy is for difficult times. This fruit of joy will manifest or if you activate the fruit of joy, it will manifest on the inside of you during difficult times. The purpose of this fruit is to manifest during very hard and difficult times. If we go, let's go back real quick to John chapter 15 and let's look at verse 9. Verse 9, Jesus says, And the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide. Somebody say abide. In my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide. Say abide. In his love. Look at verse 11. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. So in this abiding process, Jesus is actually giving us his joy. His joy will remain in you. His personal joy will remain in you and your joy may be full. So the motivation of your joy, the catalyst of your joy is his joy. When you recognize his joy, it will fill up your joy. Now, Nehemiah 8.10 tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Say this after me. The joy of the Lord Lord is is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So joy is not like strength. Joy is strength. Joy is strength. Joy is strength. So when you're sad and depressed and down and feeling like suicidal thoughts and quitting and giving up, you are literally getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. But when you allow that joy on the inside of you to bubble up on the inside of you, you allow that joy to manifest, you allow that joy to be activated and energized and engage that joy, you will begin to get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. So what is the tactic of the enemy? It's to steal your joy. If he can steal your joy, Jerry Savelle says, he can take your goods. If he can steal your joy, he can take your peace. If he can steal your joy, he can take your attitude, your good attitude. If he can steal your joy, he can take your strength. So if we want to remain strong, we've got to remain in joy. Joy manifests itself during difficult times. And if we want to be strong, we've got to stay in joy. If we want to succeed and have victory, we've got to stay in joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And Jesus said, I have deposited joy. This fruit of joy, I have given you my personal peace, my personal joy. I've given you so that your joy may be full. Now, I I don't want you to pass over this word. Here in verse 11, he says, these things I have spoken to you. There is a connection between what you are hearing and what you are receiving. He says, if you take my words that I've spoken, you will have joy. You'll have joy. I'll give you my joy if you take my words. But if you take the word of someone else, that's going to not activate the joy that's already on the inside of you. If you take the joy of someone else, it could cause you to be, I'm I'm sorry, if you take the words of someone else, it can cause you to be uh, depressed and sad and down. 
If you take the words of a spouse or take the words of your mom or dad or take the words of Pookie and Ray Ray or take the words of somebody said something to you back in the third grade and you still remember what they said and you allow those words to manifest and meditate those words, then you will be sad. But if you take my words, see, you cannot continuously hear the word of God and be sad. If you are sad, it's because you're not hearing the word of God. I can tell if you've been getting in the word by just your countenance. If you're always down and sad and have outbursts of wrath, I can tell you haven't been in the word. You haven't been spending any time in the word. But if you've been spending time in the word, that word will fill you up with his joy. And his joy will remain in you and your joy will be full. Now understand, uh, what is his joy? Well, before I get there, I, I want to talk about this close relationship between joy, faith, and the word. There's a close relationship. In Romans 10, 17, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How does faith come? Hearing, hearing the what? The word of God. Joy actually comes the same way. Joy is activated by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you have no joy, you have no faith. And if you have no faith, you have no joy. Think about that. There's a direct connection between faith and joy. I can tell if you really believe in God. Someone that's really believe in God for something, it's not sad. Someone that's really believing God to move in their life is not sad. Someone that's really believing God to manifest himself in their situation, they're not sad because the joy of the Lord gives them strength. See, people wonder, how did Abraham in Romans chapter four for 20, what, 25 years or so, Abraham believed God for the promise of Isaac. How did he believe God so long? It said that he did not waver in his faith. You remember that? Why did he waver? Because when you're in faith, you should be getting stronger and stronger and stronger because the joy of the Lord is your strength. When you're really in faith, you should be in joy. But so we wonder, how did he, how did he not waver in faith? Because we started looking around at what we can see and say, this doesn't look like it's working. Doesn't look like it's going to happen that way. Doesn't look like this or that. And we start getting sadder and sadder and sadder. Aren't you glad you come to this church? You're getting some good teaching this morning. You're getting some good teaching this morning. I'm trying to get you full of joy, full of strength, full of ability, praise God, to defeat all of the enemy when you have this joy of the Lord working in you. So if faith comes by hearing, then joy comes by hearing. What are you listening to? Praise God. Now, what is the personal joy of Jesus? Go to Hebrews chapter 12. We've got to know this because if we uh, consider the personal joy of Jesus, then we'll understand what he's actually given us and we can keep our joy full. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says here, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now, look at verse two. We spent uh, in our series, Who Are You? We spent a lot of time talking about verse one. I encourage you to go back to our website and listen to that series, Who Are You? But look at verse two. He says, looking unto Jesus. So we're looking away from any, any and everything that distracts and we're looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He's the begin and he ends. He will perfect our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him. Somebody say joy. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I want to um, bring some illumination to this verse because a lot of times the prevalent thought is that the joy that was set before Jesus was you and I. Humanity was the joy that was set before Jesus. Now, I don't think that's necessarily incorrect, but I think it is incomplete. I don't think it's incorrect, but I think it's incomplete. 
I think when we look at the joy that was set before him, uh, Jesus was looking at eternity or something that was everlasting. So joy, the cross, joy, the cross. How can he see joy in going to the cross? He understand his purpose. His purpose was to come and to redeem us and forgive us and to deliver us and to take take the curse away from us and to allow us the ability to go to heaven. Reconciliation with the Father. Restoration between God and man. That was the joy that was set before him. So when he saw the cross, he wasn't excited about jumping up on the cross. No, he was excited that I am the payment for your sin once and for all. And that is the joy that I have. That is the strength that gives me the ability to endure, to get on this cross, to suffer everything I did, because I know that eternity is at stake and I've got to bypass these humans from going to hell because of sin. And I've got to eliminate the sin problem, the debt that's owed, I got I to gotta wipe it out. That's my joy, eternity, getting them to heaven, getting heaven into them, giving them the ability to have life and life more abundantly here on this earth. That's the joy that's set before me. I am the only one that can ratify this. I'm the only one that can make this payment. And that's the joy that was set before him. So happiness is external. Joy is eternal. Did you hear me? Happiness is based upon what's going to happen around us. Joy is already in us. It's based upon what's already been done for us. The joy of the Lord. So when you're going through difficult times, you've got to activate this joy. And what is this joy? This joy is I'm going to heaven. This joy, I'm saved. Come on, somebody. I'm saved. This joy is I'm redeemed. I'm set free. I'm telling you, I'm not going to hell. Oh, some, that money's not coming in. Guess what? I'm not going to hell. Oh, that, that I may not get that phone call that's going to happen. And I, they didn't call me for that job. Guess what? I'm not going to hell. Oh, they say that you got this disease in your body. Guess what? I'm not going to hell. Are you listening to me? That joy should bubble up. I'm not going to hell should bubble up. Jesus paid the price for me to be healed. That's the joy of the Lord. Jesus paid the price for me to be delivered. That's the joy of the Lord. Jesus paid the price for me to have fullness. That's the joy of the Lord. Jesus paid the price for me to know what to do when I don't know what to do. The wisdom of God. That's the joy you should have in difficult situations. It's the joy of the Lord that gives you strength. And that's the joy Jesus wants you to have. It's this joy that, hey, I've taken care of things that you couldn't take care of already. I'm not talking about no temporary thing like going and getting a new job. I'm not talking about nothing temporary. I'm talking about something eternal, something lasting, something everlasting. When you're going through something on the inside of you, you should say, I'm not going to hell. I'm saved. And no man can stop me. No man can take my salvation away from me. No man can send me to hell. Glory be to God. Jesus has paid it all. Now that joy is operating on the inside of you. That's that fruit of joy that's operating on the inside of you. That's that joy that needs to be manifested outside of you. That's that joy that, you know what? Jesus has done it for me. I wrote this down in my Bible. The strength to endure is not present without joy. The strength to endure is not present without joy. Joy gave Jesus the strength to endure. Joy, how did Jesus, in the natural, Jesus could not have went through everything he went through. From being scourged to getting on that cross. He, he Physically, he should have not even made it to the cross. Physically. They, he was beaten so bad. And Isaiah tells us that he was, uh, he didn't even look like a human. Physically, he couldn't get there. What was the strength to endure to get up on? He had to get on that cross. What was the strength to endure? Joy. Joy. 
He said, you know what? I'm going to finish this and I'm going to go back and be seated at the right hand of my father. Praise God. I'm going to fulfill all that pertains to life and godliness. I have already fixed the problem between God and man. Sin no longer has dominion over you. Glory be to God. Jesus saw that joy. He said, if I can just get on that cross, I can ratify all of this and make it right again. Glory be to God. And in our joy is Jesus got on that cross. You ain't going to get that new job. Jesus got on that cross for me. <laughs> You're going to die. You're going to die. Jesus got on that cross for me so I don't have to go to hell. Oh, you going to, that ain't going to work out for you. You ain't ever going to get married. Jesus paid the price for me. Hallelujah. Your kid ain't ever going to be a good kid in school. Jesus is taking him to heaven. When the time is right, God, hallelujah. That's the joy that we have on the inside of us. This joy manifests itself in difficult situations. But it has to be activated. It has to be activated. See, you, you know, we get a little excited. Oh, I'm going to get happy if I win the lottery. You should, you, that happiness is temporary. That joy of the Lord is your strength. Whether you win the lottery, whether you don't win the lottery, pray God, and you're probably not going to win, okay? Just let you know. Praise God. I think it's rigged, by the way, but praise God. The joy of the Lord should be your strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Say it. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm going to heaven. Say, I'm going to heaven. That, that should make you happy right there. I'm going. Say, all my sins have been forgiven. I, I praise God, you all, you full of joy right there. There ain't not one sin you can do that Jesus' blood has not forgiven you of. Not a one. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's the joy of the Lord. And that joy of the Lord is present in difficult situations, but it must be activated. Somebody say activated. I like this word activated because it means I got to spark. I got to stir. I've got to, I've got to do something to allow that fruit. See, I'm abiding in him and the, the vine has already given me that life source for that fruit to be produced and manifested. But in order for it to manifest, it must be exercised and it's only going to be exercised in difficult situations. And so I've got to activate it so that it can produce itself on the outside of me. See, how do you activate it? You got to open up your mouth. You got to say, I'm saved. Praise God, I'm going to heaven. That I'm a, It's activating in my life. You, you, got, you start singing. Singing will activate joy on the inside of you. Giving something away Amen. will activate joy. Something significant will activate joy on the inside of you. Dancing will activate joy on the inside of you. Just just start dancing. What you doing? I'm dancing. You get that, with that, that, that new dance? You know? Yeah, 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 that's awesome. You just, you just start, you just start. Then look at, look at y'all already laughing. See? Joy was activated. That it manifested on the outside of you. You just, listen, laughing can activate joy. Laughing can activate joy. Just start laughing for no reason at all. Come on, practice right now. Just start laughing. Ha, 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 ha. Ain't nothing funny. Ain't nothing funny. Look, you still laughing. You're still, that, that activates joy. See, it's in you, but we gotta, we, we gotta, we, we gotta energize it. Glory be to God. And I, I, the other day I was, I, I was thinking about something and I got sad because you know, your, you know, your feelings follow your thoughts. I thought about something, I got real sad and I just started laughing. <laughs> and then my face got, I got, you know, I had a big old smile. What you laughing at? Nothing. I just activate joy on the inside of me, that fruit being produced. People ask, why are you laughing? What's so funny? Ain't nothing funny. The joy of the Lord is my strength. We're going to lay everybody off. Just start laughing. <laughs> That ain't funny. What you laughing at? We're going to lose our job. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Guess what? Guess what, Billy? I was looking for a job when I found this one. Praise God. God will supply all my need according to his riches and God. That's the joy of the Lord. That's the joy of the Lord. See, when you, when you're, when you're factoring the joy of the Lord, praise God, it's, you're thinking about eternal things. You're not thinking about this temporary kind of thing. You're thinking about something eternal. Something down the road that's already taking place, praise God. 
And that joy will just bubble up over on the inside of you. And that joy will make you stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Glory be to God. It's the joy of the Lord that gives you strength. And when you remember what Jesus has done for you, you are receiving his personal joy. When you remember, remind yourself, you know what? He did that for me. You know, over 2,000 years ago, he was resurrected. Glory be to God. And that resurrection gives me great joy. Because he lives, I can live. I can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord gives you strength. Say that to me. The joy of the Lord gives me strength. Joy is eternal. I'm not talking about some you know, temporary situation. Somebody gave you $100, you got happy for a few minutes, and you sad later on the rest of the day. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about eternal. It's eternal. You, you are factoring in eternity when you allow that fruit of joy to manifest in your life. Go to James chapter 1. Are y'all getting something today? James chapter 1. Look at verse 2. My brethren, count it all, say it with me, joy. Say joy. joy. Say it again. Say joy. joy. Count it all joy. Watch this. When, when, when I get some money in my pocket? When, when, I, when I have a new baby? When, when I get that new job? When the doctor's report comes back clean, bill of health, is that when I to count of joy? No, actually you're to count of joy when you fall into various trials. Now this is a sign of maturity. I'm going through something. This tough. It's hard. I'm going through something and I'm accounted all joy when I'm going through something. You know, people, they like to say there that, uh, you know, now these trials come to make you strong. I submit to you, these trials and, and troubles ain't coming to make you strong. They're coming to kill you. It wants to eliminate you and take you right off this earth. These trials and troubles, if it was coming to make you strong, everybody in the earth would look like the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> Not coming to make you strong. These trials and troubles are making a lot of people weak and beat up and, and soft. And ready to quit. They're not coming to make you strong. They're coming to beat you up. But guess what? He said, here, but we're to count it all joy. We're to count it when these various, diverse, different, without rhyme or without reason trials come. Now, remember, the fruit of joy works best in difficult times. And, and here James tells us that we're to count it joy when things are not working out. That, now, that's a sign of maturity. It's not working out the way you thought it worked out. Let, I count it all joy. Instead of always asking a question, did I miss it or what's going on? No, no, I count it all joy. I, I know I'm doing what God told me to do, and I count it all joy. Praise God. It's not I count it all joy. I ain't going to cuss nobody out. I count it all joy. I ain't going to put nobody in a headlock. I count it all joy. I count it all joy. I know, I, I know you want to do a lot of stuff, but just count it joy. What does it really mean to count it all joy? I, I, I was studying this out and praying about this. And Lord, what does it mean to count it joy? What is a simple, practical way to count it all joy? Uh, the Spirit of God told me in my heart, I just heard, don't disregard joy. When you're going through stuff, don't set it aside. Don't forget about it. Count it joy. Bring it in. Activate joy. Energize joy. When you're going through something tough, don't forget about joy. Don't forget about joy. He says here, look at the next verse in verse 3. He says, you know something. What do you know? You know that the testing of your faith produces patience. You know that there's got to be a testing. There's a testing. There's a time of proving. There's a time that you have to go through something when you count it all joy. Now, when you count it all joy, understand that it may not look like things are working out on the outside, 
but know that things are working out for you because you're counting in joy. I've, uh, I've, I have joy operating in my life. I've activated joy. I've energized joy. Ha ha ha. I'm laughing. I'm dancing. I'm counting it all joy during these difficult times. Listen, there needs to be times of testing. Right? I mean, do you want to fly on an airplane and the pilot tell you he, ne- he ain't never been tested to fly this plane before? Would you fly on that plane? No, I need you to go through a, an extensive time of testing. I need it to be hard for you. I need it to be difficult. I need you almost to get to the point where you don't want to fly anymore. I don't, I want to quit flying because it's so hard, right? I want a guy that's going through the test. And then he says, okay, I'm able to, to fly you somewhere. I don't know about this is my first time, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Do you want to get on that man's plane? No. I need you to go through a test because I need you to, I need you to get that quitting spirit out of you. You listening to me? I need to get out of you so that when you pass these tests, praise God, you are able to do what we are believing that you can do. Times of testing. We're to count of joy in these times of testing. Understand that during, there are some times you're going through some things because of testing. Testing. Does God test? Yes. He tests. Now, he doesn't test with sickness or disease or poverty, but he tests, and his tests are are tests of obedience. Will you obey? Will you continue? Will you persevere? Will you last? Because when you're tested, look at the next verse in verse 4. He says, but let patience have its perfect work so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. When you're tested, patience will develop on the inside of you. We'll talk about that fruit in a, in a, in a couple of weeks. But patience will develop on the inside of you. And when patience is developed, you will be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. But we've got to count it all joy. When we count it all joy and don't disregard joy, we won't lack anything. Uh, Go real quick. I didn't mean to turn here, but go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Real quick, Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I want to look here at verse 47 real quick. This is the curses that was that's laid out in Deuteronomy chapter 28. The first 14 verses are the blessings, but then the rest of the verses are the curses. He says, because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart. Watch this. For the abundance of everything, because you didn't serve God with joy. Therefore, you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in need of everything. Because you didn't serve God with joy, you will need everything. You will always be in need. Go back to James chapter 1 and look at verse 4. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete. Watch this. Needing everything? No, lacking nothing. Joy is the common denominator. When you didn't serve God with joy, you're going to need everything. But if you serve God with joy during difficult times, you will lack nothing. Glory be to God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. This fruit of joy on the inside of you manifests during difficult times but you have to activate it. It's there, but you have to exercise it. It's there, but you've got to initiate it and allow this joy to come up out of you and it'll be your strength. It'll be your endurance. And guess what? Uh, Tough times don't last forever. Tough people do. (laughs) Tough times don't last forever, but tough people do. Allow this joy of the Lord to be your strength. Allow this fruit to be developed and this will be a sign of maturity. You'll start looking at difficult times and you'll be like ha 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 ha. That's not funny. Well, the joy of the Lord is my strength. We're going to get through this. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'll end with this quick story. Um, There was um, something happened early in our ministry that was that was pretty bad. I don't want to get into all the details. It take me all day, but it was it was pretty bad. And I was really I was really down. I was really sad. It was uh, it was depressing, and I was shocked. And I called a pastor friend of mine, a minister friend of mine, 
And I just said, man, this person did this. And the guy sent me a text back in all capital letters. He said, praise God. Now, it was bad. He said, praise God. And then he said, let no man say they made Devon rich. And I thought, that's, that's he's quoting Abraham. When Abraham said, hey, when he gave his tithe, and he said to him, uh, I'm going to give it because I don't want any man to say that they made me rich. I want God. And he said, because they had taken something from us that was, you know, financial, whatever the case may be. And he said, praise God, let no man say they made Devon rich. And I said, glory be to God. Like that, just that, 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 that good word energized me. And I thought, this is not as bad as I think. This is not as bad as I think. I'm going to look back at this and laugh. And praise God, I look back at that situation and I'm laughing. Hallelujah. I'm laughing. And I begin to take that word. There ain't no man. They can take this. They can take that from me. But ain't no man. Gonna say that they made Devon rich. God is a good God. And I'm gonna go through this testing. And I'm gonna go through this pressure and this squashing and this squeezing. And I'm gonna go through it and it's gonna perfect me. And I'm gonna keep the joy of the Lord and allow it to be my strength. And when I get through it, I will be perfect. That means fully developed. And I will lack nothing. 